months and years of waiting were over. In early June 1944, thousands of men and tons of equipment were massing on the shores of southern England, waiting for the moment to launch the D-Day offensive. But there was one thing that was crucial to the success and timing of that operation, the weather. Poor conditions would jeopardise the whole invasion, preventing aircraft from flying and ships from landing troops on the Normandy beaches. There was enormous pressure on weather forecasters, being asked by Eisenhower to predict up to five days ahead at a time when even a forecast for 24 hours was a challenge. The man at the sharp end of the whole forecast operation was Group Captain Stagg. The tactical use of weather, just to be able to pick out some little interlude which would be unknown to the enemy forces that would uh, allow us to make use of it and, and catch uh, the people on the other side unaware. Meteorologist Stan Cornford explained the huge difficulties that Stagg had to overcome. It was his judgment that was brought to bear amongst forecasts which were often very, very different because the subject wasn't anything like as advanced as it now is. There was a war on so you didn't get so much information and uh, yeah, it was just his strength of character and perception that got us through. Weather forecasting is pressured enough these days, but imagine 70 years ago when the decisions of forecasters preparing aircraft like this one to head into D-Day could actually decide the outcome of the Second World War. Even now we're still finding new information. These weather charts recently discovered by meteorologist Anders Persson show that the Germans had much better knowledge of the weather over the Atlantic than previously thought. The Allied Commander Eisenhower made the right decision from wrong information, whereas Rommel made the wrong decision from fairly correct weather information. So, it seems the Germans may have won the Battle of the Forecasts, but if the invasion had been delayed until the next suitable tide two weeks later, gales would have destroyed any chances of a landing, and history would have been very different. Peter Gibbs, BBC News.